Hello beautiful people and welcome back to another episode of Mental Health Mondays or if you're new to my channel, welcome, my name is Maddie and today we are going to be talking about finding the right therapist for you. So it doesn't matter where you are with your journey in mental health, if you're a complete newbie to the world of therapy or if you're just unhappy with your current therapist, I've got you covered. First things first, let's start with the NHS. So in the UK where I live, you are entitled to free therapy for your mental health. It is very limited and I'm only gonna talk about this for a short period of time because I do wanna do a whole other video on how to get help on the NHS. The thing is with NHS therapy is that you can't really afford to be too picky because you're kind of given what you get. The best advice I can give you is to go to your GP and then they will refer you on to a suitable therapy service in your area and you may be able to do different things like CBT or DBT or go to a group. You can also get therapy through charities and I'll link some charities in the description below for you guys. However, I do get a lot of people coming to me saying they're, you know, at CAMS or in um, NHS therapy and they're really not getting on with their therapist and they don't feel like they're progressing. Don't feel that just because it's been handed to you for free that you can't ask to change therapists. If you really don't think you're getting anywhere and you're dreading going to therapy because you just, you and your therapist don't get on, and that's fine, ask to change. Speak to whoever it is you need to speak to, get your parents to speak to them, write an email, and ask to change therapists. Like, you're allowed to do it. I did it with my NHS therapist. I stopped seeing certain people because I just didn't think that they were really getting anywhere, and I asked to change, and even if they say no, like, at least you know that you've asked. But anyway, that's the NHS. We are today talking about if you are in a very privileged position to be able to seek private therapy. So this may be that you're lucky enough that your work entitles you to private therapy. I know quite a few people who get private health insurance through their work. If you're able to source money from elsewhere, from your parents, or if you pay for it yourself, which is what I do, I think it's the best investment I could ever make. So I'm gonna give you my five top tips on finding your therapist, because I feel like I've found my therapist soulmate. Is that a thing? I don't know. I love, love, love my psychiatrist. And that is another thing I will discuss later the difference between a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a therapist, a counsellor, etc. Because there are so many different categories and it can seem overwhelming. So tip number one that I would give you is to ask your family and friends. I find family and friend recommendations are likely to be the most honest. With me, I advise all of my friends that live locally to go and see my psychiatrist. Or even ask people online if you feel comfortable. Your friends and family are usually local to you so they can kind of point you in the right direction or tell you oh no I've been there and they were like horrendous so avoid. However I will say don't just go for a therapist that lives five minutes away from you for convenience. Go for someone that is suited to you. So like for example with my psychiatrist I was so lucky whereas living before literally I could walk to him and now I've moved house it takes me just over half an hour to get there, which obviously isn't long. Um, it's not five minutes, but you know, even if I moved to London or moved up north, like I would make the journey to him just because he's worth it. So yeah, it's just worth noting. Don't just go for someone that lives near to you. Tip number two, have a look online. Now I think this is the most important tip. This is how I found my psychiatrist. I found him myself online because he had a website. And I feel like you can tell a lot about someone from someone's website. Nowadays we judge people at face value with like dating apps and social media and, and all sorts. So you know, why not? apply the same techniques to find your future therapist. You're going to be able to find a lot of things out without even having to contact the therapist. So I would have a few categories in mind that you want to think about and that you want to get answers from. Number one, which I don't think is the most important, but it's worth noting, is to look at how qualified the person is. Are they a psychiatrist? Are they a psychologist? Are they just a therapist or a counsellor? Usually psychiatrists and psychologists will be the 
ones that have the most academic experience behind them. However, I don't think academic experience is everything when it comes to the world of mental health. I've seen psychiatrists who have been absolutely horrendous and who have just kind of like given me like graphs and like said statistics to me and said, oh, this is what you are. I think personally, if I could choose between going to see someone that's gonna just like treat me as every other person or someone who's said like trained as a counselor and has personal experience in it, I'd go with them. So have a look at that sort of thing. Number two is sex. Are you bothered if they are male or female? Now, when I was in NHS therapy, I saw all female health workers. So when I was looking for someone, I wasn't really bothered, but I think, you know, I went for a male psychiatrist because I hadn't really had experience with them and I'd had bad experience with them female health uh, professionals. You also wanna look at where they're from. Do you mind if someone is from a different country and has different values to you? I know this may seem really silly and like really picky, but you know, I actually find it enhances my um, experience with my psychiatrist because he is Danish and he like he, his English is perfect and he can speak French as well. He'll give me like phrases phrases from his language to like describe things and ask me like oh do you have a word in english for this like i find it actually enhances it so yeah you just want to think about things like that the crucial one i think is fees psychiatrists are expensive they are hella expensive especially if you're in london so recently i was helping a friend out looking for a psychiatrist in london and i stumbled across quite a helpful website actually that's worth mentioning called doctify which psychiatrists are listed on and it just tells you all about them and it also tells you their fees and oh my goodness some of them were like 400 pounds for like just a consultation just to go and see them one time and I'm like, oh my goodness, probably if you're going to go see them, you need health insurance. But yeah, you want to find out their fees and also a couple of other points. Their age, does their age matter to you if they're older or younger? So tip number three, and that kind of links in with my last point, is to think about what kind of therapy you want. On their website, they will tell you what therapy they offer, whether it's CBT, DBT, EMDR therapy, standard counselling, or you know, there's so many different types of therapies and it can be overwhelming and it's hard because if you don't even know what you're diagnosed with, then you don't know what therapy to go for. You don't have to know this before you go and see the psychiatrist because in your initial consultation, they will recommend the type of therapy that they think is best for you. However, if you do know what disorder you have and you just want to change therapists, then you know, you can think, okay, like me, I've got borderline personality disorder I want to go to someone that does DBT which is you know the therapy that is designed to treat that disorder tip number four is to speak to them on the phone I feel like an online profile gives you a good idea but speaking to them on the phone definitely gives you a gauge of like what type of person they are how they speak if they're warm if they're friendly you know and if you're too scared like I was I dare and pick up the phone and call a psychiatrist even though they're a psychiatrist you know they're used to it i think i got my dad to email my psychiatrist but then i'm not sure what happened the email get, got lost so then i chased him myself and i think even in an email you can definitely gauge the tone of you know your future therapist and my final tip tip number five is to go to a consultation with them there usually is a consultation fee sometimes people as an incentive will offer a free consultation but you're never gonna know if you're gonna get on until you meet them in the first consultation you don't have to tell them your life story i think before my consultation, my psychiatrist asked me to come to him with 10 goals that I wanted to achieve through therapy. And it's funny because we then like looked back at them and I've pretty much achieved those goals. But yeah, I went with my goals. I gave him a brief history of my mental health and I liked him and I look forward to my therapy sessions. And is it weird to say that I enjoy them? But I just really like his stance because I don't feel like, obviously I feel like a patient, but I don't feel like he's looking down on me. If you know what I mean, I don't feel like he's been like, you've got mental health problems and you're like lesser than me which that's the kind of vibe that i've got from a lot of psychiatrists in the past like they know best they've got a degree in it they've got all of these statistics and oh okay so you're fitting into this category and did you know 75 percent of people blah 
no. I think you'll know and hopefully you'll be able to gauge from the first session if you come out of there feeling like hopeful, like yes, I think this could work. And you know, if a few sessions down the line you think it's not, then that's fine. Just stop and change. And I know that not everyone is in this privileged position and I really appreciate that. So I promise I will make a video on NHS therapy and I'm gonna do loads of research into that so I can try and get you guys the best help for free. But saying that actually, my psychiatrist actually does do NHS work. He also works with like the prison system and people that are, you know, very, very, very ill on the NHS and he also trains student psychiatrists and stuff like that. So it may even be possible to speak to them about finding a way to get to see them on the NHS. So I really hope this video has helped you. Do let me know in the comments below. It is totally normal to be in despair about these things and feel overwhelmed and see loads of people and none of it work and try loads of different types of therapy. That happens to a lot of people. I feel like I hit the jackpot with my psychiatrist and I will actually leave his details in the description below. So thank you for watching and please do give this video a thumbs up if you did find it helpful. Any other suggestions you have for future videos, then just pop them in the comments below. And I will see you guys on Thursday for a new video. And until then, goodbye.